What's the word, y'all? We're the great slate of NBA games, and I'm here to talk about everything that I saw today. Be sure to leave it a like. Now, today we're doing an experiment, right? Because I'm starting today's show by talking about the most boring team in the NBA. Now, boring, not necessarily a bad thing. The Spurs won a bunch of championships by being one of the boring teams in the NBA. But the Indiana Pacers are boring and they're also mediocre. <laughs> and you don't want to have that combination. And I am sick of it. Maybe I shouldn't be because they're in my division and them being mediocre is kind of okay. But just as an NBA fan, I am sick of the mediocrity, if that's how you pronounce that word, of the Indiana Pacers. And this is an experiment because I'm putting their name in the title, I'm putting them in the thumbnail, and we're going to see if this is our worst performing video of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about our presenting sponsor, which is, of course, Prize Picks. So what I need from you is to hit that link in the description, download the Prize Picks app, and use code Kenny because they're matching every deposit up to $100. There's already been thousands of NBA fans from this channel to join Prize Picks strictly off that link, and we want more. Man, so many of y'all be tweeting me y'all wins and everything and let me show you man from yesterday <laughs> So tonight I had a five player flex play right and flex is great because one of my players didn't live up to standards And that was Rashawn Holmes, but since four other dudes did I still walked out of that a green $50 to a hundred dollars Asian doubled the money Oh, you thought that was it ladies and gentlemen we had two hit in the same night this one is a little bit different we had John Collins at one assist but since he landed exactly at one that Entry is completely voided. So now this is a three out of four, and the only person that let me down was Kemba Walker. He only got one rebound. I thought he was going to get two. I was wrong. And listen, just talk to anybody in the community that has downloaded prize picks, and they'll tell you they've been having a blast on it. So it's never too late to join. Hit that link in the description. Download the app and use code Kenny because they're matching up to a $100 deposit. And join in, man. I'll be seeing so many people winning, and I love to see people win. Remember that I'm just a dude that watches basketball. You may disagree with everything I say in this video, but it's all opinion-based basketball talk. All right, let's get into the Indiana. The Pacers today they lost a game to the Detroit Pistons and that's not great now it's not as bad as it would have been two weeks ago because since Kay Cunningham came to the lineup they are four and five and Kay two games in a row he puts up good stats which is good are we done writing off players after five games of, the NBA career, of their NBA career okay cool the Indiana Pacers lost a game to the Pistons tonight where they failed to put up at least 90 points and they lost their last game to the Knicks and they failed to put up 90 points and as an nba fan that's just you know i just want the what's best for every organization i know it's unrealistic for every nba fan to be to be happy with the direction of their organization i have not talked to or seen a pacers fan on the timeline that is in love with their players then you know what you know what that's actually not true because anytime i say something negative about the indiana pacers i always get a group of people that say hey bro we're still missing tj warren we're still missing well today they missed chris dorte again we're still missing this player and this player and this player and that is part of the problem every single year it's we're missing this player we're missing this player so we never get to see the full strength of this team that is a problem. We've seen this team, this orchestration of this team about three years in a row. And it's always, dang, if X player wasn't injured, we probably would have made it out of the first round. Man, if once it was your call, it wasn't injured, we might have had the fourth seed instead of the sixth seed. And then last year, they had a lot of turmoil in the locker room with the head coach. And it was like, you know what? We don't need to change our roster at all. The only thing we need to do this season is bring in Rick Carlisle and everything will be good. And what have we seen? It has not been good. It's frustrating because on paper, they have a bunch of players that are that are contributing NBA players. <laughs> they have like a 10-man, when they're healthy, a 10-man roster of players that can go to almost every other team and get good rotational minutes. But it has never worked out more because, ah, now Karis LeVert is injured. Oh, man, Malcolm Brogdon's banged up. And what makes it worse, coming to this offseason, they were in rumors, ladies and gentlemen. There's a name on the market named Ben Simmons. And whether you love or you hate him, he is a guy that is on the market that can potentially make some changes in your organization. There's rumor that the Pacers were talking to the 76ers. Malcolm Brogdon with Joel Embiid, you might have to throw in another piece like Jeremy Lamb and maybe some picks or whatever. That would have changed up their organization at least a little bit nah ownership was like we gonna extend Malcolm Brogdon so nobody can even give a call about him because now he cannot be traded for the entire season it is so wild that they're okay with just rolling the balls out with this team and I think the best thing that can happen to them as a as a fan of the NBA and wanting their fans to be happy is that they miss the playoffs completely because if you continue to make the playoffs as a six seed but oh man Malcolm Brogdon missed 40 games we just need him to get healthy 
the organ the organization's ownership are gonna convince themselves that we just need the we just need one more year of this core. We need one more year of this core, one more year of this. It's never going to work. But this is the crazy part. Because like I mentioned, there are six and ten at the moment, right? Six and ten. Not that terrible. I mean, with it's below 500, but not terrible enough six games of the season that they're out of the playoff hunt. They will. Mark my words, ladies and gentlemen, they're gonna go on a run soon. They're gonna go on a four, five game win streak. And just like that, they're back to the sixth seed and nobody really cares again. And then they're gonna have an injury. And they're gonna get to the playoffs and they're probably gonna get eliminated in the first round. It's the same cycle with the Pacers every single season. And I've been to a Pacers game. I got I was met with nothing but um good hospitality. It feels like a college basketball game. It's like a Coliseum style. It's it's amazing atmosphere. But if the team is not is failing to score 90 points against the Pistons, then something is wrong. Again, Pistons fans, that's not a shot at all because since Cade has been in the lineup, again, you guys have been okay. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to y'all. But yeah, this is this is dreadful. Seven attempts for your all-star Demontis Sabonis, and a lot of that is due to the fact that nobody's giving getting him the ball. Um, uh, Karis LeVert, at this point, since he's come back, he's just taking mid-range shot, uh, shot chucking and, and attempting threes that he's not going to hit. And I can't even talk about Malcolm Brogdon because nothing I can say right now even matters because you can't trade him anyway. So... Yeah, I, I don't know. Let, Pacers fans, that's just an outside view of your organization. Let me know in the comment section how you feel. All right, let's go to the next game, which is Lakers versus Bucks. Originally, I didn't really plan on watching much of this game because since LeBron has not been in the lineup, the Lakers have been very hard to watch. And I've known a lot of y'all Lakers fans have noticed that since LeBron has went out with his injury, I haven't really talked about y'all as an organization and y'all games recently because I can't look at what's going on and overreact to it because one of the greatest players of all time who's on your team is injured. You know what I'm saying? Like here, there's some take there's some takeaways you can you can get like um Kim Baysmore shouldn't play any more basketball for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Those type of takeaways we can still see. But as far as like how will this team bear in the crowded Western Conference, it's hard for me to make an assumption because your best player one of the greatest of all time has not been able to play. One thing I can say, at least in today's game, Russell Westbrook had one of his best individual games, which is good because recently he's been better than like the first week or two of the season. And that's always the thing with Russell Westbrook, right? And when he's going to a new team, it's going to take him a minute to adjust to whatever the heck they're doing. This one, even though they didn't win this game, him individually and, T and Talon Horn Tucker, Talon Horn Tucker, were great. It's the outside things that weren't. Um, hopefully, Anthony Davis is okay. He ended up playing 37 minutes, but I know he got hit in the thigh or the leg area. But it's... The nickname is so terrible because he can't control the fact that he gets um, beat up every day. Um, but the data Davis is, is, is crazy um, because he is getting nicked up every day. Um, but it's just... I would love... And, and maybe I'm asking too much of Anthony Davis. Maybe this is not too much. We talk about a player that was voted one of the top 75 players of all time, which I love AD, one of my Chicagoans, but that's low-key wild that he's top 75 of all time. Anyway, um, is it too much to ask for him to draw a foul or two? I, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it is because he is Data Davis that you don't want him banging down there and potentially getting hit in the eye and now he's missing seven games. Zero free throw attempts is kind of wild for anybody that's playing 37 minutes at the center position. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Let's turn it around. We'll talk about Giannis. The Bucks, another team that I have not talked about a lot because they've been missing three starters for the entire season. Drew Holiday recently came back, and though he didn't have a great shooting game, his playmaker was up there, his defense was up there. Chris Middleton had his first game, and that was one of the reasons why I really tuned in. I knew that James Christopher Middleton, um, which is always fun to say, that his name is James, um, wasn't going to have a great game because he hasn't played in a few weeks, but to have him back on the court is a step in the right direction. They still don't have Brooke Lopez, they still have Dante DiVincenzo, and because of that, you get minutes from Sammy Ojale, and there was like a two possessions in a row where he was getting the ball in the block, and he did like a turnaround jump shot. Brooke Lopez, get well very, very soon, so Sammy Ojale can be spot minutes instead of the 14 that he got. But this one, this one was a Giannis game, ladies and gentlemen. Giannis with a 47-piece. A 47-piece, and the jump shot looked as good as ever. You know, he was my pick preseason for the MVP because, well, his jump shot was looking good, but the fact that the Bucks have not been near 100%, um, he's kind of been under the radar for the entire season. Let me look at what his actual counting stats are on the season. 28, 11, and, and 6. I mean, he's putting up amazing stats to be in MVP conversations, but since the Bucks haven't been able to win much because of their injuries, and since they haven't looked great because of their injuries, he's kind of been under the radar. Um, Chris Middleton is back. Drew Holiday is back. I don't know the timetable on 
on Dante DiVincenzo or Brook Lopez. But if I'm not expecting Giannis to put up 47 tonight, but if he's playing this nicely, he will slowly creep his way back into MVP conversations for sure. This was a beautiful, beautiful game for him. All right, the Bulls. Ah, oh, man, you broke my heart today. You broke my heart today, but what did I say? What did I say? Every time I talk about the Bulls, whether I never get too high and I never get too low. We were up by 20 points, and this is the thing. I have been burned on this many times, right? Um, and that's saying something because the Bulls are never really good. Um, where I start to talk a little bit of trash on Twitter, I do it. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm an NBA fan. I'm I'm a basketball fan. Talking trash is part of the part of the game, ladies and gentlemen. And at halftime, Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum both they had like six points total. And like four of them were at the free throw line. And the only point, only field goal they had as a backcourt was a goal 10 call. So what did I do? I tweeted, I tweeted a lock. Because, hey, we were locking up the backcourt. Well, did that come back and bite me? <laughs> did that come back and bite me? Because them boys, you know what? It wasn't even a backcourt because CJ still got locked. Dame hit a couple shots in the fourth quarter. But I would still go out and let me say, he got locked. It was the surrounding pieces. And this is 100% the best win on the season for the Portland Trail Blazers. To be down by 20 plus points against one of the better teams in the entire league and come back and win when, when your two star players weren't having great games, that's good. That's a momentum builder. And if I'm not mistaken, it puts them at a 500 team. Um, and again, you still didn't have a great Damian Lillard game. You won this one. A lot of credit goes out to um, Larry Nance Jr. That third quarter, he was unstoppable. I would have loved for Billy Donovan to start calling a timeout once we went, uh, once the Trailblazers started to, you know, it was snowballing in that third quarter. He waited very late to call a timeout. But again, never too high, never too low on my favorite team. Yes, it's the epic collapse, and I hate these. But this is not the first time in the last two seasons that we've collapsed to Damian Lillard and the Portland Trailblazers. Um, even when we were up by 20, I, I'm never going to say this game is over, especially when I'm dealing with the Bulls. No matter the who's on the Bulls team, I just know there's always a possibility with our luck that we're going to blow a game. Um, but they deserve a lot of credit in this one, man. They definitely deserve a lot of credit. Um, the Bulls, and listen, we, we're, I think, on this West Coast road trip that puts us 2-2. Two and two, And we're going to Denver. So we need to um, we need to win, in, win Denver to win this West Coast road trip, come out of here 500 um, or over 500. What I need from this Bulls team, until Vucevic is back, which is coming, he's, he's getting back in shape, and he should be back very soon. We need to be better with allowing free throws. We allow 28 free throws in this one, and in the last game, even though we won, the last two games, even though we won, we had a ton of fouls. And in the first 20 seconds of the game, Tony Bradley, he had two fouls. Dear Jones Jr., he wasn't great today. You know, he had a 16-point game in 16 minutes last game. Um, he had five fouls in very quick minutes. You, We have to be better defending without fouling now the defense has been good the whole season but we got to get our fouls down at least right now we're not without having Vucevic and relying on play, like, you know other players that shouldn't be getting as many minutes that's when we get in trouble you know what I'm saying um but listen we lost we move you know what I'm saying we, we lost we move south to the Portland Trailblazers on a big time big time comeback next game we have the Charlotte Hornets beating Beating the Washington Wizards. Oh, that's another reason why I wanted my Bulls to win this was so bad. Because if we won this game with the Wizards losing, we would have been back in first place. And I just want the screenshot. <laughs> you know, 15 games of the season. We in number one. Um, but no, no, the Wizards lost and the Trailblazers. No, not the Trailblazers, but the, the Charlotte Hornets win. You know, I don't have too much to say about this one because it wasn't a pretty game at all. The main reason the Washington Wizards lost this game is because they did not shoot the ball. They could not shoot. There's a play they shot 42 threes and they hit eight of them. You know what I'm saying? It was just the worst shooting night of their entire season. Can't look too much into it. The Atlanta Hawks beat the Boston Celtics, and this was the the best game of Jason Tatum's season so far, which is a very good thing. Because the last episode, we were talking about how he has been very inefficient this season, how 90% of his shots are isolation. And I was listening to No Dunks, which is a podcast um, hosted by the people that used to be known as the starters. If y'all didn't know, they had a YouTube channel named No Dunks now. Go subscribe to the homies. You know what I'm saying? They've been trying to get 50,000 subscribers for a minute now. And I know a lot of y'all grew up watching the starters and don't even know those dudes are still kicking it on YouTube. Shout out to them. Um, they were, I was listening to their show and they were doing a list of the most disappointing players of the season so far. And one of the players was Jason Tatum, which makes sense, man. Um, though Jason Tatum hasn't been God, God awful. He hasn't been the Jason Tatum that we expected. Remember when I was given my preseason award, one of my dark horses for MVP was Jason Tatum because in my mind, Jason Tatum's gonna come out this season and he was gonna perform individually and maybe they may, that may lead for to the Boston Celtics winning more games than they probably should, right? Um, that has not been the case this season. He's been super inefficient and he most of his shots, I mean, how, how, do, how do you rephrase this? He has the lowest made shots on assists 
of his career? Is that how I frame that? Basically, his shots are coming in isolation instead of in floor of the offense, catch and shoot type stuff. Um, but today, he had a big game, 30 points, 34 points to be exact, on 50, 40, 83, which is great. Um, the, unfortunately, they don't have any offense outside of him. And if Dennis Schroeder's not having a good game, which he didn't have a bad one, but he didn't have a good one either, then nobody else on this team can really score. Especially when you have Jalen Brown and uh, Robert Williams not playing. Um, it's going to be hard to get wins. And then another win for the Atlanta Hawks. West Coast road trip was a fluke. And just like that, the Atlanta Hawks are on a three-game win streak. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Y'all know a team that I'm heavily invested in is the New York Knicks. Five years reads. Tom Thibodeau, Derrick Rose, Toss Gibson. Okay, you understand that. Um, so I watched, I would say 90% of Nick games. And today was one of those games where I really tuned in because they were going to see Orlando Magic at home. And um, the Orlando Magic, if I'm not mistaken, their first win of, of Jamal Mosley's career was in the garden against the Knicks. So I'm like, okay, let's see what the Knicks got on this one. And what they had was nothing. Um, so shout out to Franz Wagner. Shout out to Cole Anthony, who, hey, one thing I like about Cole Anthony is I can take his threes on prize picks and... I'll be okay with the result because I know he's going to attempt a bunch of them. Like today, he was one for nine. I think his 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 uh, threes were at two. He didn't hit two, but it wasn't for lack of effort. He is not afraid to shoot that ball. Um, and then Jalen Suss came back from his injury, looked pretty solid. Late game, Terrence, um, Terrence Ross got a steal, breakaway steal, and he did a nice dunk in the garden. And then Wendell Carter um, has been playing pretty solid. I think he had nine points in the fourth quarter, but he ended up with 11. And one of the last points he scored was an alley-oop late in the game. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but the Knicks. It's, it's starting to get a little bit worrisome, right? And I, I've mentioned this in before. I don't know how long before we look at a team sample size and be like, ah, this is who they are. Now, they're still one game over 500. It's not like they're a bottom feeder team, but they have not been nearly as good as what I wanted them to be or expected them to be. And a lot of that, and most of that is due to the fact that their starters do not play well. Um, we mentioned this before. Um, we talked about the stat news stat where they start. It was like three games in a row where all five of their starters had a, a minus plus minus, and then all five of their bench players had a positive, um, you know, positive plus minus. Today was not one of those days. But man, 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 Julius Randle, and I have to I have to say this very very clear. He shot eleven shots, ten of which were threes. He hit four of those threes. That's fine. But for a guy whose play style has always been, I'm going to bully you, bully you, bully you. I might take a turnaround, mid-range jump shot, heavily contested, but hit it or get to the basket. For him to go in this game and not to get to the basket one time is like boom to me. RJ, who at some points of the season, like he was about to be, the, be a breakout player, has regressed. Evan Fournier, who we gave, I say we because I'm talking as I'm a Knicks fan at the moment, who we gave a big bag to, set the entire second half, right? And and in this one, this is another game where Obi Toppin like tied his career high of 14 points. He only played 17 minutes. He had a lot of momentum in this one. And then guess what happened? Tom Thibodeau, Tom Thibodeau yanked him. You shouldn't be losing to the Magic at home twice. The Mads got four wins. Two of those were at the Garden. I'm just saying. You know? And the Knicks have to figure it out, man. They really have to figure it out because they're they are letting a, a lot of Knicks fans down at the moment, man. A lot of Knicks fans are starting, starting to talk, man. Starting to talk about the starting five. I even saw people mentioning or suggesting that Tom Thibodeau decides to <laughs> bench all the starters and start the bench unit. <laughs> Get the boys. That sounds... If that don't sound like freshman B-team strategy, I don't even... If that don't sound like freshman B-team strategy, you can't do that in the NBA, right? If there's anybody crazy enough to do it, it is Tom Thibodeau, so we shall see. And I I, I feel I feel bad um, about not being able to talk about this game as much as I want to, but the, the Phoenix Suns are now in a 10-game 10, 10 win streak, and that is the longest win streak of the NBA season so far. The Warriors, I don't think they ended up at 10. I'm, I'm going to go back and count. It's not that big of a deal, Kenny, but I, I now I'm just very curious. No, the Warriors didn't even hit a 10 game. They had a four-game streak and then a six-game streak um, and then a one. Okay. Um, so the longest active win streak in the NBA this season. Double digits, the first team to do that. Um, and Y'all don't really understand how tough that is to do. Like, yes, some of the parts of their schedule when they were on this streak were against teams that are not great. But why, like we've mentioned a few times today, 
any team can win on any given night. And because the, the Bulls game, <laughs> because the Bulls game was so close, it, priorities, man. I had to watch my team. So let's quickly go over some of the games I didn't pay too much attention to. I'm doing this specifically for the one guy that tweeted at me. These are your exact words. I'm giving it to you. The Cleveland Cavaliers are missing so many players and still came close to beating beating the, the Nets. I don't know how true that is because I didn't watch the game, but that's what the one fan said with the Cavalier, <laughs> Cavalier logo as his profile picture. P.J. Tucker put up 13 points. That was the best stat of this entire game. It wasn't the fact that Jimmy Butler had a 30-point triple-double. It was P.J. Tucker ending the game with 13 points on 1-3. If P.J. Tucker was going to put up double-digit points, I just assume he had like three threes and then maybe a layup or maybe he got fouled on one of the threes in the four-point play. This man ended up with... Th I got to go watch all of his possessions because I need to know how this man... How, how did you allow P.J. Tucker to score five baskets from inside the three-point line? P.J., you know we love you. Next game, the Kings lost. Beautiful. Um, De'Aaron Fox had one of his better games of the season, which is good, but hopefully this is the last straw. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Luke Walton might be fired by the time this video comes out. Um, fingers crossed. And even, I always say those type of things, um, I don't like doing it because obviously this is, we're talking about a person's livelihood um, and he has a family and everything. So I never want to root for somebody to lose their job, but I'm rooting for Sacramento to, to get in a better state. And I mean, I'm not saying exactly that firing Luke Walden will fix the, fix the Sacramento Kings, but I'm just saying that it would help, at least in my opinion. And then very, uh, very lastly, um, uh, Lou Dort has put up 20 plus points in five plus games in a row. See, my boy Cone keeps saying that now Lou Dort is a two-way player because he, al he always said the defense, but you want to see the offense come around. He's averaging 17 and a at point two on the season. That's insane. We're talking about Lou Dort. Lou, Lou, Lou gets Dort. Teams were leaving him wide open in the corner his first, like, two years of his career, and now he's averaging 17. I didn't watch this game, but uh, I might watch every possession of Lou Dort's 34 points tonight. All right, y'all be asking for the longer episode, so here we are. Y'all better see the retention rate on this video be crazy. But then again, we talked about the Pacers at the top of the show, so maybe not.